So you've just bought a new CPU and you want to slap that bad boy into your computer as fast as humanly possible. But you don't have an aftermarket CPU cooler, so you have to use the stock one included in the package. Bummer. But it's not all bad. The good news is that most of the time, stock CPU coolers will be okay as long as you're not doing heaps of CPU intensive tasks, such as rendering, and you don't have any plans to overclock. Now you may have noticed, but all stock coolers come with thermal paste pre-applied. Like I said before, they will do a decent job of cooling, but can you squeeze a little bit more performance out of them with just one little change? In this video, I look at the difference between the pre-applied thermal paste and a high quality aftermarket paste that you could potentially use instead. The final results were actually pretty interesting, but not quite in the way you'd think. Let's get started, shall we? Now for this video, I'll be using AMD's Wraith Prism RGB cooler, every boxed second and third generation Ryzen 7 processor, and the Ryzen 9 3900X CPU, which is the one I have, comes with some kind of AMD Wraith cooler. All things considered, I was very impressed by AMD's stock cooler. It absolutely destroys Intel's pathetic excuse for a stock cooler in every facet. Honestly, at this point, Intel really needs to come up with something good or they are gonna get destroyed by AMD. And this is coming from a former Intel fanboy. After doing some research into the thermal paste applied to stock coolers, I came to the conclusion that it's fairly decent as in it will perform at an acceptable rate provided you're not thrashing the CPU. There were some reports that it tended to cause air bubbles and poor cooling, but as far as I can tell, these have been debunked. Now, don't believe for a second that the thermal paste on these stock coolers are anything but the cheapest quality possible. But nevertheless, I wanted to compare it to a trusted compound such as Arctic Silver 5. I've linked this in the description, by the way, which I've been using for around five years with pretty good success. It's thermal grease, so you can pick up a really high quality tube for the cost of a cup of coffee or less and there are cheap thermal grease solutions out there, but at such a low price point, there's really no point in choosing a budget option. For reference, this tube was about six US dollars and will last me a couple of years. To begin the testing, I installed my brand new Ryzen 3900X into my open air test bench and installed the Wraith Prism cooler with stock thermal paste onto it. I wanted to test a variety of circumstances to Mimic what the typical user may be using the system for. I made sure the ambient temperature stayed the same throughout the testing, changed the fan curves to ensure the fans were at 100% speed the entire time, and I used the same default profile in Ryzen Master throughout the testing. Starting by monitoring idle temps, the CPU temperature at the die was on average 3.5 degrees Celsius cooler when using the CPU with the Arctic Silver 5 compound. This is a fairly negligible difference because the overall temperature is so low at idle. A CPU under 40 degrees is basically ice cold at idle, so there's really no advantage of a few degrees. Moving on to a more CPU intensive application, I rendered out a 10 minute 4K video in DaVinci Resolve. And as you can see, the Wraith Prism cooler did a fairly good job of keeping a CPU under 85 degrees, although the fans sounded like they were about to take off into the air. It's never a good idea to have CPU temps in the 80s, but for a render every so often, it's no big deal. You can see that the temps were cooler with the aftermarket paste, but only by about 1.4 degrees. This slightly cooler temperature, however, resulted in a higher average clock speed, which means the CPU was not being thermal throttled quite as much with the higher quality paste. In real world applications, this would result in a very slightly improved render time. Running Prime 95 for 15 minutes produced almost the same result. CPU temps this time, however, were more pronounced with a difference of three degrees favoring the Arctic Silver 5 and a similar difference in average clock speed. Out of all the tests I conducted, I believe Prime 95 to be the most accurate 
as it's designed to stress test your CPU continuously. A difference of three degrees may not seem like much, but if you're running an application for hours, that can make a difference over time, especially if you can squeeze a little bit higher average CPU clock speed out of the CPU. This will also very slightly influence the longevity of the CPU in the long run, as you should always aim to keep the CPU as cool as possible under intensive loads such as Prime 95. Moving on to Time Spy, I wanted to see how the cooling would perform in changing circumstances. Time Spy tests your overall system, so we'll turn the CPU on and off in bursts to produce a final result. The stock thermal compound was two degrees hotter than the aftermarket compound here, with a noticeable increase in average clock speed as well. So what about gaming? Well, the answer is that it doesn't really matter. The temps and clock speed pretty much stay the same. You may see a difference if it's a super CPU intensive game, but the current Modern Warfare game kind of already is, so I didn't bother testing further. So what does all this mean in a practical sense? Well, if you're just going to be gaming or you don't have any good thermal compound just laying around, it really doesn't matter. You probably won't benefit from spending the extra $5 on it. However, if you are interested in keeping your CPU a few degrees cooler when you use CPU intensive applications, such as Prime 95, I would actually recommend an aftermarket thermal compound. In addition to slightly lower temps and improved clock speeds, there are a few extra benefits that you might not have thought about. Firstly, a good thermal compound will last a long time. While the jury is still out on the quality of the paste that comes pre-applied on the coolers, compounds like the Arctic Silver 5 are very easy to remove, even after drying, and tend not to get crusty and dried up like the stock stuff does. Funnily enough, I almost bent the pins on my new 3900X, trying to remove the stock cooler with stock thermal grease. The stock grease had dried so much in such a short time that it was like the cooler was super glued to the CPU and the entire CPU came straight out of the socket when I tried to pry the cooler off. This is after letting the computer run for a bit to warm the grease up. High quality thermal grease tends to be much better in this regard. So that's about it for this video. Hope you guys found it helpful. If you do have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to all of you. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next one.